today we're going to talk about the difference between a roaster rabbit and a fryer rabbit. So this is part two. We, we processed these two days ago. They've been soaking in the fridge in salt water. So these two right here, these are going to be roaster rabbits. These are roaster rabbits because they're more than a year old. These are larger rabbits. Their meat's a little tougher. Their muscles are a little stronger. And so they have to cook longer, so you can't just fry these up. So these I'll get packaged up, and I'll get in the freezer, and then I'll pull out the two that we process that are fryers, and I'll show you how we cut them up, because we're going to fry those up for supper tonight. Okay, so here are... Here are our rabbits that we're going to fry up. These are fryers because they are young. Um, we try to do our fryers before they hit uh, six months. At six months, they're pretty large, but they're still tender. But we usually try to do it when they're younger, when they're um, weaned. We put them in grow out cages and we grow them up to, um, you want them anywhere from three to five pounds. I prefer five pounds. Some people go three. So to slice one of these up, okay, here's the front legs. Here's the back legs. So this muscle here on the back leg that goes around into the tailbone, we're going to get right under that. And we're going to follow it up to the tailbone. So there's one nice juicy leg. And we'll get the other one. There's another beautiful juicy leg. Back legs are nice sized. Front legs are small, but the kids like them. So where the front leg hits right here, we've got the, the shoulder blades. I come under that. And straight up. And that gives us a beautiful front leg. You're going to get your most meat if you go under it and straight up. Now, I don't know about a lot of people, but I cut this belly part off and I freeze it separate and I use it for stews and soups. It's just a very thin flap of meat. Adds a lot of flavor if you boil it down and make a broth with it, so that's what I do with it. So where the tailbone is, that we're just gonna break if I'm strong enough. There we go. Get that broke off and that'll go in with my meat for stew, also for broth. So their, their ribs are very thin and very small. So I try to get to the last rib, rib bone and then puncture right below it and out. This is going to be the best eating part of your rabbit, my opinion. But some people are different. Rabbits that you grow at home, um, we're talking all white meat. Now the rib cage, we're going to go ahead and that's going to also be part for stewing. This right here is where most your meat is along the back. It is solid, white meat, pretty lean. 
Um, the bone is very small, so all you've got actually is this little tiny piece of bone that goes through here. The rest is all meat. This, um, when you're cleaning out any kind of critter and you get that little section that's the tenderloin, the nicest part, this is it. The nicest part of the rabbit. Hooks up really good. So I'm going to get the other one cut up, and then I'll get them in a bowl, and I'll soak them a little bit longer until it's time for frying. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's helped you with your homestead and processing your rabbits and being able to cut them up and, and uh, do what you need to do with them. So you have a beautiful day. I know it's a beautiful day here. We've had some storms, but it doesn't matter. Um, gardens needed it. We had some fun out playing in a little bit of the rain, jumping in some puddles. Like, share, subscribe. Bye-bye. Thank you.